Carol Collins, are you with us? I am. Welcome. Thank you. Chief Strahan, are you with us? I am. Welcome. Kurt Borgi, are you with us? Yes, I am. Welcome. Mr. Peter MacGyver, are you with us? He, uh, they have had a busy afternoon. He is on shift. Uh, so we have this recorded so he can take the phone afterwards. All right. No worries. Jen Strumston, are you with us? I am. And taking minutes. Thank you very much. I agree. <laughs> and I appreciate, uh, Peter taking them last week when you were traveling. We had a kind of a crazy meeting last week. Uh, Jean Wall, are you with us? Yes, I am. Mayor Roxanne Wiedegarten, are you with us? Uh, here. Great. Those are the members. And Neil, you are with us. Neil Joyce? I am here. And is Dennis joining us today? Dennis is here. He's on mute. I... Okay, he's on mute, but he's with us. Excellent. Thank you, folks. All right, I will make a motion. There wasn't many of us. We were on and off. It was a little crazy with the storm and everything, but I'm going to make a motion to approve the minutes. A motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Can somebody second it? That was on the meeting. Second. Mayor, thank you. Is there any discussion on the meeting minutes? Just uh, the end of the, the minutes, they were emailed to everybody this afternoon. The end of the minutes, it does recognize that uh, the meeting was disconnected due to uh, the storm and power outage issues within the city. Okay, great. And that is, that is a fact. <laughs> it is a fact. Okay, um, can I have a, um, I'll take, uh, let's, let's do a, uh, a vote on the, um, approving the minutes. I don't know if I have to do an individual one. I think we can all say in favor. Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Extensions? All right. Minutes approved. Thank you. Next, uh, next item on the agenda, David, is contact updates for Pachico Ross. All right. Contract. Contract. Sorry. Sorry, it's small writing. <laughs> Contract. So, um, I saw the email. Um, uh, Mayor. Um, right. About the update. So, can you do you want to give us an update? Well, just that it's in progress. I'll have um, uh, Greg Schmidt, our lawyer, uh, make the the final uh, edits to it, and it will hopefully this week, um, within the next couple of days, and it will go out to Dennis for signatures, et cetera. Okay. Um, Mayor, right now we're getting our, um, you're talking about the temporary contract. Is that a correct statement? Well, the contract I have in hand discusses okay. both property, both properties. Okay. It's just that the location okay. of the permanent is a TBD. Okay. Um, we're getting, we're getting scope and fees from our um, consultants right now. We should hopefully have them in by next week. And once we get that, I can fill all that in for you. Okay. And all the insurance also. Okay. Good enough. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Great. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you for the update. Does the, anybody in the committee have any questions related to the contract? So we aren't obviously starting drawings in, in any depth until that takes place, correct? Uh, no more than what we've seen, didn't we? Didn't Well, I don't know. Were we able to get through all of the, the Dennis's drawings from at the last meeting I, I before we got cut off? Or maybe we didn't well, get to them at all? We did. We did. Okay. I don't, I don't know, Dennis. Do we have anything else? Uh, we don't have anything new, but um, we are proceeding as we speak in order to make the bid date that, that Neil wants, which is early December. Um, 
again, we're getting various scopes from our consultants for the temporary now, and we mm -hmm. are laying the temporary out and working on it as we speak. So that is moving forward regardless of the contract, just because we need to. And David? Yes. Uh, Neil may want to, and we have Marlo on the call too, Neil may want to give an update uh, of the of a meeting that he had just briefly uh, with Marlo regarding any assistance that the DPW may be able to provide so as to not have to go out and contract for various things. That would be an excellent update. I think we'll tie that in, Neil, with um, when you speak of uh, the uh, the little presentation you're giving. On the budget. In the budget? Yep, sure. Okay. okay. So, can you, Dennis, can you just, I'm curious, can you speak of, because I started in the email from the mayor and you just spoke of it. Can you just fill me in a little bit about um, your cons the consultants? You said you're, you're getting... A, information sure. from consultants who are the sure. consultants uh we have two consultants we need as far as the uh, temporary goes the first one is going to be um fuss and o'neill for any site related uh things that we need so if we do need a little bit of grading some drainage anything to that effect you okay. know we'll have that consultant on board as needed and then the other one is uh, ces which does mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineering. And again, that's for once we get into the buildings, hookups, you know, making sure the sinks, the extractors, the toilets, and all that stuff, the HVAC, anything we need, just to make sure it's all there and all working. I want to have these folks under contract. Okay, great. All right, thanks for explaining who they were. Yep, that's helpful. No problem. <clears throat> okay, excellent. All right. Um, was there any other questions with respect to the contract of what we've covered so far? All right, next agenda item. What did I have, Chief? <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, You're keeping me straight today. Additional review, first step, and preconceptual drawings. Okay. So we saw the drawings um, last week. And I think everybody's gotten a copy of those. Has everybody got it on the committee had received a copy? And Neil did gave us a nice presentation. Does anybody have questions on those drawings after you got them and you were able to study them a little bit? I mean, we know they're just they're not they're not architectural. They're like preconceptual. But uh, I think they did a great job. So I just wanted to give everybody a chance if they had any questions for Neil or Dennis. It looks like Ed does. Hey Dave, I know that I'm not on the on the on the committee here, but I I had asked that um that the that the full committee get sent all these drawings and uh, we haven't received them yet. So maybe yeah. they can be sent to the full full committee, all the committee, and in, and in and any drawings that that we get from here on out get sent to the rest of the committee. Absolutely, I apologize for that. We'll get them to you. Okay, Whatever thank you. Or I will. We'll have hey, them before the Thursday. Oh, we'll get them to you today or before the Thursday. So you have them for okay. the Thursday meeting. Okay. All right. Dave, so just a little ahead. bit of a just a little bit of a um segue, I think, into the next agenda. Um in the the agenda item reference next steps. So um we had a um meeting this morning. Uh, a teleconference with Marlo and Paul Raskovitz from the yeah. DPW, um, as well as Dennis and Adam from Pacheco Ross. We talked at a, a relatively um, high level in as much as it was as, as detailed as we could come up with at this point in time about um, the site, the locations of the utilities that we're going to be tying into, and um, the scope of work that uh, we would like to ask the DPW if they can perform um, to the benefit of the project and at a significant cost savings than contracting that work out. 
and that uh, Marlo was very gracious in his time and in his comments. Um, we are continuing to work with he and Paula in terms of developing a plan to move forward. And um, I'm pretty sure Marlo can do the whole job. It's just a question of getting the trailers on site and then fitting, fitting the work around his other commitments in the city. So we're, we're hoping that we can get that project and that work started really as soon as possible. Um, and then that goes hand in hand with Dennis uh, developing the drawings a little bit further, checking pitch and inverts and runs and grades and all of the other things that go along with uh, designing a building. So I think that probably brings us pretty much up to speed with where we are now. Can can you um can you elaborate a little bit about when you said you think Malo can do all the work? Do you have a list of? Well, I know we talked a little bit about uh, the utilities and that type of thing, but do you have any more detail on that? So there there are some existing um, there's some modifications to the parking lot as it is today that we need to do. Those okay. include um, removal of some curbing and sidewalks at either end of the um, of the parking area, um, both of the entrances along uh, Prospect Street and the two entrances adjacent to the um, courthouse. Uh, those mod those ramps have to get modified. Um, we're talking about water service, um, uh, storm drainage. A sewer connection, um, and then some uh, minor uh, landscape removal at the beginning, and then restoration of sidewalk and landscaping at the end of the job, just to restore the parking lot to where it was. Marlo, did I miss anything? Uh, I don't think so. I think that covers it. Well, that's excellent. We appreciate all that. <laughs> Thank you. Anywhere we can save costs is going to help us with the permanent fire station. That's the goal. Thank you. Um, any any additional questions for Neil before he goes into a budgetary presentation? If you if you are, just speak up. I'm looking at folks. Um, I'm looking to see if anybody's raising their hands or going into the chat, but. Neil, do you want to move? Do you want to share your screen and go on to the budget? Sure. Uh, do we want to uh, do that under new items? Um, yeah, we can. We can do that. Um, we can do uh, an update if the mayor has any updates on the um, this the steps to take over the parking lot, uh, and then we can go on to new items and do that. That's fine. <laughs> Um, I have no, I have no updates on the steps to take over the parking lot. Okay, you had mentioned last week that you had it was um, in the hands. There was information in the hands of it was it the parking control folks, or I, I'm not too sure. Uh, their meeting is this week. It could be tonight, for all I know. So okay. uh, we haven't heard from them yet. Okay, great. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll we'll by next meeting. Thank you. Yeah, or even by Thursday. <laughs> Yeah, by Thursday, that'd be great. All right, so we'll go on to new items and um, we could have Neil speak and share his screen if he would like. Yes, I will do that as soon as I find the right screen to share. Here we go. We're doing pretty good, not a lot of questions this week. We can see it. So we ran through um, the the drawings and the uh, conceptual uh, block plans, if you will, that we laid out for the committee last week in the meeting. Um, we were in the process of developing um, what I would say is a pretty conceptual level estimate based on uh, bringing services in um, and, and whatnot. So, I, for the ease of the committee's understanding, we divided this into three basic elements. And those elements 
are pretty much going to match the way that we procure these services for the city. The first category is category A. It's for the leasing of the temporary structures. And the breakdown of those costs are for four double wide modular office trailers. We obtained a quote from William Scotsman, who is what I would classify as a premium office trailer supplier for temporary buildings. The estimate for the uh, temporary offices is about $212,000 based on a 24 month lease term. This does not include any buyout price or any purchase price for the city at the end of the contract. It's a straight lease. Um, and this includes uh, most of the interior fit out. There will undoubtedly be some minor odds and ends that we need to take care of. Um, we're going to ask the leasing companies to include the fit out of two bathrooms, uh, two showers, as well as a small kitchen area for the firefighters usage during their stay in these facilities. The second line item is the uh, quote for the apparatus base. And this similarly was based on a 24 month lease, no buyout. So it's a straight lease, a straight rental. It includes the engineering of the buildings as well as the install, a monthly lease, and removal and return at the conclusion of the lease period. And for the equipment bays, that lease price was $740,000. So all totaled, we're in it for about nine fifty-two dollars for the lease of the temporary structures and buildings. So I think I'll take any questions that anybody has on the lease structures for now. It's 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 really pretty straightforward, um, but I'm sure that there'll be some questions that come up. Folks, if you have questions, um, just speak up, please. We're getting some background noise, so everybody mute if you're on here, especially if you're either chewing or eating or opening up gum wrappers or something. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Thank you. So if there, if, if there are no questions, I apologize. I can only see a couple of you on my screen. Um, I'll move on to the fit out. I, I have a question, Neil. This Go ahead, Dave. Dave. So... Um, you, you you talked about the lease being two years, and we would all love it to be less than that. What happens if it goes over the two years, even if it's a few days or a week? Is there something that will be built into the lease with respect to time? I'm just curious. We, we will add, um, I would say, an additional six months extendable at the request of the city month by month. So that if we get caught at the end due to change conditions or whatever else, um, we don't lose the temporary before we're ready to surrender it and give it up. Okay, great. And um, I was just checking the chat to see if anybody was in the chat. Um, it doesn't look like it. Um, I, I don't have I don't I don't have a hard copy in front of me, Dave, but I could um, I'll I will follow up with the committee next week and uh, give you an estimate of what that monthly cost may be based on these quotes. Okay, yeah, I think that would be helpful. Um, again, the goal is to make it within the two years, but things happen. So if we yep for yeah, sure. Um, Okay, that I appreciate that. Thank you for answering the all question. Right. Yep, you can. I'm all set. And I, does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, this is Carol. I just, um, if I may, just wanted to verify that with the bays that includes the insulated panels and the heating system. Correct. That's yes. That's my understanding. It it is. It does not include 
a propane tank to run the furnace, but it does include the furnace and uh, some preliminary duct work as well. Correct, Dennis? Yes, that is correct. Perfect, thank you. And Neil, yes, that th these these uh, these budgetary estimates that you were given include set set up in in decommission and removal, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. I don't think there's any other questions, so I think you can move on. I don't All right. see any in, in the chat room. So then, so then what we did was we just uh, we just sort of walked through the process of what it will take to get the modular trailers and the apparatus bays delivered and, and brought to the site and set into place. Once those are done, there is a uh, package of work, if you will, that we're calling fit out. And that work contains a combination of uh, bringing all of the utility services up and tying them into the office trailers. Uh, it includes bringing water service as well as drain and perhaps a, a oil water separator into the apparatus bays to handle wash water. And it includes uh, some carpentry work to build a covered walkway that runs from the temporary office trailers to the apparatus bays. The reason that we're doing the walkway, one is to provide safe passage between the three buildings for the firefighter personnel in the event of a response. That's first and foremost. But the reason that we're separating them is because of a code requirement for uh, fire suppression systems. So fire sprinklers in a, in a building greater than, I think it's around six or 7,000 square feet. Um, so once you exceed 7,000 square feet, you must sprinkle a building. And the idea is, is if we keep the building separated, and they are not physically attached to each other, we can treat this as three separate small buildings as opposed to one large building. And the city of Greenfield would not be obligated to sprinkle it with a, a fire suppression system. Um, so that it goes into a little bit, probably a little bit more detail than you needed at this point, but I'd rather give you too much information than not enough. Um, the majority of the costs of the fit out are associated with the plumbing, the electrical, and the utilities. Those are, that's about half of the cost of the facility. And again, as we said before, that's water, sewer, drain, uh, electrical service, it's uh, supplemental lighting. Uh, we're doing some uh, breakout uh, rooms or areas within the apparatus space for things like gear storage, uh, self-contained breathing apparatus, uh, bottle filling stations. We sort of touched on all of this um, last week or even the week before when we talked about the conceptual aspect of uh, what the temporary station may look like. Um, so we've done some unit prices based on some past work and we're, we're roughly at about $550,000 for the fit out associated with the buildings after they landed. A lot of this work is what we had conversations with Marlo and his team about this morning, how much of that work they would be capable of performing on behalf of the city. Any work that the city performs themselves would not be subject to bid and it would not be subject to prevailing wage. So that's a, that's a major savings for the project. It, it's not free, and whether it comes out of Marlowe's budget or whether it comes out of 
um, the capital project as a result of a transfer or an accounting function, um, the city could do the work at significantly less cost than what we're showing here in the estimate. This is, this is based on contracted services. I'll, I'll take any questions anyone has. Neil, this is Marlowe. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, the I can. Thing, the one thing we didn't talk about today, what about the electrical and communications? Is that gonna be overhead or excavated? Uh, Chief had a meeting on site with Eversource and they have agreed conceptually to provide electrical overhead and have agreed to, as long as we're within, I think the chief said 400 feet of the service, they were gonna set a temporary pole on the site and run service into the, uh, into the lot for us to hook into. And that would be done at no expense. You know, but there's three buildings, correct? So we'll, they're gonna bring it to one location and then we're responsible to get it to each of the three locations, correct? Yeah. Yes. You want, to, you want me to address that, Neil? Please. So the meeting that I had, uh, I met with the engineer from uh, Eversource. Uh, there's actually going to be two services that come into the property. Uh, we need to keep uh, each service under 400 amps. Uh, and so one would be coming in off of Hope Street that would feed the uh, probably the uh, the this office is... space. Mm -hmm. a and then the other one would come in off a prospect that would go towards the, uh, the two apparatus bay. They are uh, probably within the next month or so replacing the pole that's already, it's there's an existing pole within the parking lot. But in order to make it up to code, it has to be a different pole, a larger pole. Uh, and they've already put that, that uh, work order in to get that pole replaced. Uh, so it'll be ready to go when we call for them to drop the lines for us. Uh, the pole replacement and the overhead uh, will be done at the expense of Ever Eversource. Excellent. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Neil, I have a question. Well, sure. let me see if anybody else has questions in the chat before I ask. And I don't think I see any. If I miss somebody, please speak up. So, Neil, you talked earlier about the um, Malo in the town, uh, and you gave us some details on work, um, you know, uh, uh, at the street level and um, that type of thing. And now you're talking about a different list with a lot more details. So, is there other work that the city is willing to? off of this list that you have up on the screen that we think the city can handle? Um, we are we are talking with Marlo and his team to do some or all of the demolition, the concrete work, and then contribute, if not complete, the plumbing and electrical, and then the earthwork, the site improvements, and the utilities. So it's it's sort of broken up under a lot of different sections, but the description of the work that we're asking him to do is what we had highlighted earlier. And Mao, you have a great understanding of the details of that. I, I mean, I we a lot we obviously most of us weren't at the meeting, but I'd like to hear from you for a few minutes if you could. Well, well, I think to restate what, what Neil had already said, uh, the DPW is quite capable of doing all of this work with the exception we spoke about carpentry. That's a little off for us. Um, so in our meeting today, we talked about having a little more detail, such as where we're gonna bring the water in from, uh, where we're gonna run the sewer to, are we gonna do a pump sewer? So I asked Neil to come up with a little bit better details on the scope of work or drill down with the scope a little bit, and we'll go from there. Um, obviously, my department will we'll do anything we can to help. Um, uh, you know, we got a lot going on, a lot going on in the spring, but uh, that's what we do. We'll figure it out and, and, and try and get these things done. But 
I think the important thing to remember is we're just waiting on a little more detail so I can give a little bit more firm answer on timeline, so on and so forth. Um, the mayor and I agreed there's no snow this winter, so we got that all set. All right, thank you, Mayor, for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I get the big bucks. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, David. That it does, Neil. Can you can you put a, 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 a separate list together on all the items we think that we can have Malo's team look at and possibly do just so we have a list. I know you. this is a kind of a, a bigger list of budgetary items, but can you start a running list of those conversations and what we think they can do? So when we start looking at the conceptual drawings for pricing, we know where the pricing is going to go, whether it's going to go out for bid or to the town. Yeah, that will, that will largely have to be defined when we as the as the design documents progress for both the lease and the site work, we'll have to do that. We'll have to know what the city is doing and we'll have to know what we have to contract out for other services. So in defense, in Marlowe's defense, the first time that we talked about this in detail was month, was Friday of last week. And then we started our week this morning at nine with a follow-up discussion based on our original discussion on Friday. So he, he really has only had 48 hours to digest this and, and I'd hate to make statements that would put him in a corner. I'm, I'm confident that we'll be able to work through it and we'll absolutely be developing lists of things that we have to do as well as what the DPW will do, what's being contracted and what's being done by other outside agencies. Great. Yeah, we don't want Mao put into a corner. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet, anyway. I'm pretty so, sure that we'll get him there eventually, but right now, let's give him a little wiggle room. I don't want to scare him. Exactly. Okay. Um, no, no, cor no corner here. It's, it's no what corner. we do. We'll figure it's it out. <laughs> there you go. All right. So the last, the last cost category was the soft costs, and those are the the A and E fees, the OPM fees associated with the temp building. Um, I put in an allowance for new cons new equipment. Excuse me, um, you know, based on the age of things that are in the existing fire station. When you start moving electronics, oftentimes you run into some problems. Um, so we put in a, a line item for new equipment. If we don't use it, we don't spend it. Um, in addition, we put in several line items for relocation of things like the SCBA, the bottle fill, the extractor. Those are typically moved by the manufacturers, not necessarily by the city themselves. The relocation of the radio equipment will need an outside agency to provide some assistance. Uh, turnout gear and general moving expenses are a little bit easier to deal with in-house. Uh, certainly, we'll have IT support from the city's um, communications and, and technology consultant to do uh, any relocation of computers and computer networking once the trailers are landed. <clears throat> There's a, a line item that may or may not be required regarding the signalization controls at the Main Street, Hope Street intersection. Is that right, Chief? Who might be muted? Okay, if we need it, yes, if we so, need it. So we're looking at other options to that, that is correct. Right, if we need it, we'll use it. If we don't need it, we certainly won't. Um, we had previously identified some ground level storage units. So we've got two 20 foot storage units uh, priced as part of this package. And those are relatively inexpensive, but I just wanna confirm those are strictly uh, uh, weatherproof boxes. They're waterproof, but they're not, um, they'll be, cold as hell in the winter and hot as hell in the summer. So those are not for environmentally sensitive or heat sensitive materials. And really the last item is the um, 
exhaust extraction system, which um, is a it's there's an, a manufacturer one one manufacturer out there is called Plumavent, which is what they have right now, and that's basically um, a truck exhaust capture system that uh, connects to the trucks when they're in the apparatus bays and breaks off the trucks as they respond to a call. And it just exact, it, it extracts the exhaust fumes and carcinogens from the apparatus bays and living areas and protects the firefighters. So that system will have to be relocated. We would, we would in an ideal world, we would like to use the components that are in the existing fire station to the greatest extent that we can and relocate those to the temporary um, and then provide a new system for the new fire station. The, the age of that equipment is roughly, I think Chief said 15 years old, so it's getting close to the end of its useful life. And I hope that we can get one more move out of it um, and bring it down the street to the temporaries before yeah, it meets its face. Neil, I spoke with Plum Event today. They know the system, they know the last, they have their whole uh, repair and maintenance history on it and they see no problem that it can make one last move. Excellent. You think we can squeeze two moves out of it? <laughs> nah, because two more years from now, and I don't think most of that stuff you can get parts and pieces for anymore. There you go. <laughs> and uh, prior to having the conversation with the chief recently, we had identified $10,000 for new electric services and uh, cable, data, any other connections that need to be brought into the site. So we may not use most or all of that. So the soft costs roll up to $431,000. And again, going back to the total with the fit out and site utilities at roughly 550 and the lease structures at 950, we're basically at a million 930 for the temporary station. Um, again, just sort of our qualifiers that's based on a 24 month lease term for the structures. No buyout is associated with that. So at the end of 24 months, it goes back to the manufacturer. We are in ongoing discussions with the DPW for city participation to offset those costs. But two things I just wanted to make sure that we're clear. We have not included money to salvage or restore the cupola. That would be, I think, a combination of uh, assistance from the library and the cost of restoration would be in the permanent building project. And then um, long-term long storage of what I'm calling sensitive materials. So that's the, the pump truck, uh, any artifacts or memorabilia that the chief would want to save and would be uh, subject to uh, harm or deterioration if left in a cold and damp environment for two years. So if we need, if we need to provide conditioned space for temporary storage, that's not in this. Um, and the work associated with the cupola is not in this. So I haven't had a discussion with the library folks yet about the, the demo budget. Um, but I'd mean to have a conversation with them to see if there's money in there for the demo budget and especially to re remove the cupola. And then you had mentioned that the cupola, the installation would be part of the new budget, correct? Well, yeah, that'll have to be part of the, the permanent construction budget. Dennis, I, perhaps you can speak to that. That was my assumption. It, that is our assumption also, uh, because it really has nothing to do with the temporary. And, and we're not real sure when the demolition takes place, just what condition that is in, how, how fragile it may be and how much uh, restoration it may take. We're, we're just unsure of that. David. Yeah. Yes. David. Yes. Uh, uh, it was brought to our attention at the full committee meeting last week and uh, by Steve Dracula, who is also an architect. 
and has had other civic uh, municipal projects where they attempted to save cupolas and it, it is a, it is a complicated process he's not saying we can't do it or that we shouldn't do it just know that um that as you noticed in some of those um temporary those um schematic drawings uh preliminary drawings that we are making going to make every effort um to remove it in a way that makes sense and preserves it. So yeah. I think right now, I mean, whether it whether it sits on top of the the someday permanent fire station is another story. Uh, but for now, just know that we will attempt in every way to incorporate it into the design of the permanent and. It try it, attempt to ensure to take it off the um, a regular structure, the temp, the current fire station, in a, in a way that preserves it as much as possible. Thank you. Makes sense. So Neil, yes, didn't didn't the chief say last meeting that all the the pump, the old pump truck and everything else he's going to store in his in his garage in his house, right? So we won't have an expense for that. Hope not. <laughs> I thought it was gonna go in his living room, Dave. I gotcha. <clears throat> I think he's on mute. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> okay. Gonna have a little humor. Um, Absolutely. You are. I, I think that as the chief had mentioned one time, um, I mean, I don't foresee the, there being huge expense in, in storing items. I mean, there might be some, but I don't think it's going to be a bank breaker uh, to, to, to store the items. Uh, th we might need a line item, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, I don't think it's going to be a figure we need to worry too much about. Does anybody have any questions um, with respect to Neil's presentation on the committee? I'm looking at the chat and I'm scrolling to see if anybody's raising their hands and it doesn't look like it. Does anybody on the committee have any new items they want to bring up before I bring up a new item? I, uh, can we ask uh, Herb Forgey if there's any update on uh, his working group that he's, he's uh, working on? Absolutely. Mr. Forgey. Did you do you have a location for all the important items? We have not done an inventory yet. We had one of our people who has been laid up due to minor surgery, uh, and we are in the process of being able to sit down, get together, and find out exactly what we do need to put in different places. Yeah, I Excellent. think I. I think I mentioned the last meeting, and if I didn't, uh, we do have a retired firefighter. Uh, who is kind of our, you know, unofficial historian that is uh, going to be helping out um, Herb and Ed with that. Um, and uh, if anybody else wants to continue and help, uh, I'm sure that they will take the help because it's a big, big project. Well, we appreciate all the help we can get. And thank you for, um, for the um, taking the lead on that, uh, Herb and team. Appreciate it. You're more than welcome. All right. Any other uh, new items from folks? Looks like everybody's being a little quiet today. Um, Neil, I'm going to put you on the spot again. <laughs> um, can we talk? I want to talk about some dates, if we could, especially reiterating the date of not now that we, we, we should within the next week or so, we should have a good the contract finalized. Can, can we just review dates again with respect to when we might see? I mean, I don't want to hold you to an exact date, but I want to talk about dates that will be ready to have a, a true set of conceptuals and that, to, that ready to, be, to go out to bid. Can we just so review what, that again? So what, we had, what I had previously talked about with Dennis and what I think he's mobilized to provide is to provide a set of documents that we can put out on the street for bids for the temporary fire station um, in December. And 
we I'm I'm targeting as early in December as possible. The reason being is the later into December you get, you start toiling with the holidays, and that leads to um, diminished bidding pools. So I'd like to see them out as early in December as possible. Um, understanding that you know by the time we get the contract squared away and everything is signed, you're really looking at November one, um, and you have Thanksgiving to deal with in November. So. You know, if we're if we're on the street in mid December and we don't open until the first or second week in January, I I think that might be the best that we're going to get. Dennis, do you have an opinion? Uh, that's why I started. Uh, that's why we started work last week because we were knew we knew we were going to run into holidays, um, you know, short work weeks, et cetera, et cetera, and. We just wanted to mobilize as quickly as possible. Um, I agree with you, Neil, the earlier in December, the better we'll do. And Neil, once the once the drawings go out for bid, what, what is how long is that process to get the for uh, the RFP and to get pricing back? Is that a, a couple weeks or so the, the state mandates that any bid proposal that's solicited is advertised for minimum of two weeks. Okay. So we we cannot expect bids any earlier than 15 days after we put them on the street. And and I would suspect we'll take a look at how much of the utility work and how much um, of the other work that the DPW will be able to do. And if it looks like it's going to be just more of a modular lease type building, um, or buildings, I should say, I would say that two to three weeks would be very realistic. Okay, great. I just think it's important to focus on timeline, even if it slips here or there, or we do better, just so we all understand what the goal is. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you for that answer. David, this is Marlo, if I may. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, quick question for Neil. I know uh, today's discussion and, and what we uh, talked about this afternoon, is it fair to say that uh, what we need to put together to figure out what we may be doing on our end, we should probably figure that out in the next couple of weeks if that's our timeline? Would you be prepared for, for the information, you know, that I needed to so we could go <laughs> forward? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would, again, I would defer back to, to Dennis and to make sure that there, there will undoubtedly, Milo, be an open exchange of information over the next two to three weeks. And I'd be willing to bet it'll change between what we know now and what happens in December. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, Marlo, for your sake, because we are backing you into a corner, what we can do and what we'll try to do is concentrate on the work you need and do that first so that, that we can get that to you. It'll probably come in dribs and drabs, but at least we'll be able to get that going first and get it to you. Yeah, and and, and the reason I ask is in all fairness, um, you know, it, it came up earlier about the parking lot. Um, to make this work, again, it's not gonna snow, ha ha, but uh, even going into spring, you know, if we could work our way in and out of there and, and you know, say we get a good stretch, we could do water taps so to speak. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. We may have to piecemeal this in and out of there throughout the winter or in the spring. But uh, I think that was a little follow up to our discussion today, Neil. Paul and I had had some discussion on this afternoon. So uh, again, we're, we're gonna try and make this work one way or the other, but we just gotta know what that is. We, we all know, need to know what that is. Uh, understood, Milo. We'll we'll get you and funnel you the information as as quickly as it becomes available. Yeah, well, much I, appreciated. I, I just wanted to put that out. Well, I think I think that's important, Milo, because we don't want to back you and your crew into a corner because you have other respon a lot of other responsibilities, and we do want to meet a timeline. So once we get the pricing back, we really want to set a, a to go date and. You know, we want to look, eventually we want to look at a move-in date. So, you know, we want to make sure if we have X moving date, you can meet that date 
And again, we don't want to back you into the, the corner because you have other responsibilities. So it's going to be, can you do this or can you not do it? You know, and whatever your honest opinion is, that's, you know, what's that, that's going to be what's important because we definitely want to make dates, especially move in date. Yeah. Yeah. I completely understand and I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Neil, for the info and the, You're welcome. the timeline. Um, Mayor, does the question, Mayor, are you you're still with us? I am, I am still very much with you. Just, I just couldn't find the unmute. <laughs> I understand. I know how that is. Um, mm -hmm. it, it can be a progressive uh, commercial at times, if anybody has seen that commercial. With being yeah. on <laughs> online meetings. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the the um, presentation that Neil gave on the budget, is that going to be helpful um, for the full committee uh, when it's time to go in front of the town councilors? It was pretty detailed, although we have to have conceptual drawings, but I just wanted to get your take on that. Well, I think so. I think the place that it may be more helpful, most helpful will be actually at tomorrow night um, ways and means meeting. And it really only depends on what kind of questions they have. Um, so um, I, I, it's good that it's been done. It's good if I'm not mistaken, it shows a little bit of savings. Um, but again, we haven't had the bidding process or any of that. so. We don't really know um, for sure. I think they'll be interested in the fact that the DPW would be willing to help as much as they can. It'll be important for them to understand that. Um, as far as the city council meeting the next day, um, I would say uh, essentially the same thing. Uh, full council needs to also understand what's involved in a temporary structure. And I, I they may, I, I think many members do, but I think many members may not really fully understand that. So to the extent that it can help them understand all of the moving parts, um, the better situated they are to understand why we need the extra funding. That makes sense. <clears throat> Thank you for the, the uh, input. All right, does anybody else have any questions? Any other open items? All right, so um, I know there was a little bit of a mix up with uh, dates and times because of the four weeks um, a month or the five weeks that we have a month, but my amazing wife put a whole schedule together on all our meeting dates, which I'm gonna forward off to Bill and team and everybody so we have them. I just don't have it in front of me. Uh, but I will get that off to everybody. So there's a full building committee committee meeting on this Thursday, the 22nd. And I believe our next meeting will be the 2nd of November. And I'll make sure that I send that list of dates out so everyone has it. And I know, Neil, you're waiting anxiously for that. You're on mute. All I want to do is get you on the calendar so it's not a guessing game. That's all. I, I understand. November 2nd, you said? That will be our next meeting, yes. Okay. Four o'clock? Four o'clock, yes. Perfect. In, invite to follow, right? Yes. And <laughs> amazing notes from Jennifer to follow before that. Oh, wait, November 9th? Hold on a sec. <laughs> no, it's the. How do we get the 9th? Two weeks. So the library meeting. No, it should be. It's supposed well, to be the second and fourth Monday. Second. Okay. The, okay. I apologize. Second and fourth Monday. So it will be the 9th. Sorry about that. It will be the ninth, 
And I really okay. promise I'll get you that entire list of dates out because I'm going to keep messing it up. <laughs> All right. The ninth, folks. Thank you. All right. Um, I had no other I had no other um, items. So um, if nobody else does, I'll check the chat to see if anybody has any questions or items. Is one second. Of, okay. Thank you, Peter. He backed it up second and fourth Monday. So it is the ninth. All right, if nobody has any other questions, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Everyone in favor, aye. 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 Thank you folks for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Very right. good. Thanks everyone, have a good night. Thank you for bye the hard all. work. Yep, bye-bye.